Hey folks, this is the Love of Cinema podcast. We like to talk movies. If you like to talk movies too, you come to the right place. Best part about Marathi film industry right now is that there is no star. We are not a star-driven industry. It's not as if if one person acts in a film it's going to be a sure shot hit. everybody has to reinvent himself all over again and that means we are a content driven industry hey guys this is himanshu and this is the love of cinema podcast welcome back on today's episode we're going to chat with a filmmaker who has deep ties with marathi theater as well as the world of streaming his debut film bab janma was one of the best indian films of 2017 a deeply moving drama with shades of black comedy bab janma tells the story of an aging spy who's struggling to mend his strained relationship with his kids one of the reasons why i really like this film besides such in categories on brand terrific performance and its lovely quaint soundtrack is that it's not a sob story which is what for the most part melodramas about generational detachments and his strange relationships usually tend to be writer director nipun dharmadikari takes a rather fresh approach at tackling the subject one which employs techniques and tropes of dark comedy all the while preserving the strong emotional core of the central subject if you haven't seen it i would highly recommend it it's streaming on amazon prime on this episode i chat with nipun on bab janma a massively successful talk show casting couch and marathi cinema and marathi content in the age of streaming we also talked about why marathi cinema is still behind when compared to other regional cinemas in making genre bending genre smashing films which really pushed the boundaries nipun also shared tiny bits about his dream project which he's been working on for almost 5 years now and is slated for a 2020 release you don't want to miss that nipun also touched on why although he thinks about politics a lot He doesn't usually talk about politics publicly. And finally, towards the end, Nipun had some interesting book recommendations for us. Just a quick customary note about the podcast before we get on with the chat. If you're listening to this podcast for the first time, do check out our past episodes. If you enjoy similar conversations centered around films and streaming shows, do consider subscribing to our podcast. You can find it on all major podcasting apps. Here's my chat with Nipun Dharmadikari. First of all, thanks a lot for uh, coming on the podcast and talking with us. And I have a lot of questions, so let's uh, dive right in. And sure. um, I wanted to start out uh, by talking about uh, Bab Janma, uh, a film which uh, both my wife and I uh, both uh, like it a lot. It's one of my favorite films from 2017. And I would love to hear from you how this movie came about. but uh, before you begin i just wanted to set it up by making a personal observation about the film what i liked about the film was i really liked um, you know how although the film has a strong emotional core there are also shades of uh, dark comedy uh, if i may call that and instead of a soap story which is often the case with uh, you know stories about generational emotional detachment uh this one has you know those uh, threads about uh, those threads along the lines of a black comedy as well so could you tell us a little bit about the film and if my reading is right um yeah your reading is right one thing that i can't avoid uh, even how much ever i tried is humor so whatever <laughs> uh, whatever topic i decide to handle i think uh, there comes a little bit of humor in it uh though uh, i try and limit it to uh, the subject i mean the most important thing for me is the subject and the story whatever the medium it is that i'm working in whether it is theater or uh, film so um when i was writing the story it it actually came out of um, an idea out of a group discussion where in a few of my friends uh, uh, they they mentioned that if if a father who acted as if he was dead so that he can uh probably get back with his estranged children that is that was the one line 
and uh, there was a, a visa or a mastercard ad i think which spoke on the same lines there's also an um, older marathi film i think which starred uh, um, ashok saraf wherein he he is considered to be dead but he turns yes, up yes. anyway but that that's not a comedy at all plus uh, i think the royal tenen bombs by uh, wes anderson it kind of kind of delves into the same topic Anyway, similar. Yeah, yes. similar topics. So, having said all this, um, this was uh, way back. It was sometime in 2013 that we discussed, and uh, it stuck with me. The one line stuck with me. And while I was working on some other things, um, there was this one uh, script writing workshop that came up, and uh, not not a workshop. It was a lab. So we were supposed to send our scripts to that lab to get approved, and you know. Uh, it was that time uh, wherein you had to do whatever you could to get some kind of funding for your film because nobody knew you i mean it's not that uh, things are different right now but still at that time it was it was even harder so um, uh, that lab provided me with the deadline for the script and i got going i wrote the f- i finally wrote that script and uh, it didn't get selected to that lab but one good thing that came out of it is that i i wrote something on a blank paper so uh, once that was done i uh, since i had nothing to lose i just started approaching actors who i felt were right for the role and interestingly before i had any money to make the film i had actors on board who had like the script and they wanted to do it so um, once i had actors on board i started uh, searching for producers and eventually after 2 3 years i found producers and thankfully everything fell in place in the end another thing i like about this film is that uh, you know it's not didactic you know it, it doesn't try to take sides and um, it kind of also shows uh, the sun side which was kind of nice thank you so that uh, i think that whoever is the writer or director of any film i think he puts a lot of himself into it whatever the topic might be i think i am that kind of a person who who would probably like to listen to both sides before jumping to any conclusions or before judging anyone so i guess and also i think i'm terribly terribly tired of films wherein um we look in we look with sympathy at older people and how they are being shelved aside and how they did everything right throughout their lives and still they are being uh, judged and uh, not given their due by their kids which i think is uh, i mean everybody makes mis- makes mistakes so uh, that was one one thing that i wanted to put forth and also in a family whenever um whenever there are differences whenever there are fights there are quarrels i don't think that one side is right and one side is wrong i think there are both sides are uh, both sides have something to say and it's something like a generational gap which can't be um, bridged by anything even even by communication i think because it's it's just you're conditioned in one way to think by the time in which you live and the society and it's just not easy to get along like you said i mean both sides need to be shown and i thought you did a wonderful job of that okay. and <clears throat> another thing i wanted to discuss with you was one of the plot points or um you know um sachin kedekar's character he's 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 uh, apparently a field agent for um a secret yeah. service right and it's that's a breed that is usually conditioned for emotional detachment as part of their professional profile okay. you know which i thought was interesting because even that guy ends up grappling with uh, these issues right right so um so there are many things uh, for i mean when i was writing the character to make it more and more believable that somebody like this can do it i mean first probably i had thought of a bank manager a person who had been the bank manager for all his life but somehow that was not fitting in place and one thing led to another and i thought that why not have a person who has an experience doing all these things and probably it also gives an explanation to why he actually was away from his kid why he was so emotionally detached from his family and um, i got to reading about um, these field agents there are there's a wonderful book um, um, called cowboys of raw and it was great and uh, 
uh, th there were articles wherein most of these field agents had to marry to put up a cover and most of their families didn't families didn't know that they were serving that purpose they felt that they are just married to somebody who is going uh, regularly to a bank um, in jaisalmer or rajasthan or somewhere but actually that person was working on the border or he was going across the border so it was uh, it was amazing to uh, find that people actually live such lives and it's not only in movies that we see an arnold schwarzenegger in true lies uh, being an insurance agent or whatever and uh, <laughs> yeah and um, so uh, so i i think it kind of gave a reason uh, for his emotional detachment as well but at the same time uh, it was not as if he didn't want it he was thrown into it but somewhere i think everybody um, craves for some kind of an attachment and um, he he has formed a bond with his family but he is not able to express it so that is the kind of conflict that uh, uh, the protagonist is facing right right and there is also that interesting dynamic about him with um, his friend um, i believe that's uh, played by um, uh, akasha yes and that's a wonderful character and that's the only bond that he has you know which has stayed intact and yeah. that's partly probably because of his uh, work right because he has uh, spent most of his time with uh, this person than the family right so that person and uh, his man servant uh, mauli so he's uh, mauli probably came into his life after his uh, wife had died and um, uh, that was also after he got after he retired so he is a little um, um human i think is the right way to put it human with mauli he he had shown his human side to him and also with um, ashok who is played by akarsh um, wonderfully so uh, and at the same time one thing that i uh, while reading about cancer about brain tumor and one thing that uh, came in the reading and research was that it also kind of changes you as a person so uh, you don't have any control over it but it the, the tumor in your brain also kind of um, uh, it, it changes you fundamentally and i think even that is also what has happened with him which i have not uh, in a way explained uh, in the film because i didn't think there was any need to do that and uh, could you tell us a little bit about the music the music is so wonderful too i mean it's it's uh, kind of quaint you know it's a throwback uh, so to speak but yeah. uh, it's beautiful both of those there, there are only two numbers if i'm not two mistaken numbers. right yes and both of those songs are lovely yeah so they were written in the script i mean the situations were written in the script that um, there will be one song that his wife sings she's uh, an amateur singer and she must have recorded it and it is kind of a throwback it's like a memory uh for the protagonist as well that one song um, in a way he lives uh, all the uh, good memories he has with his wife through that song and another was uh, depicting um, the next the next song was would depict the kind of turmoil that his son is going through at that particular point of life while he's going through his memories and um, uh, the songs were written by kshitish patwardhan who is a, a fabulous writer and he writes scripts he writes songs and he's very good at whatever he does uh and yes, i remember yes. so i remember narrating the film to him or rather he had asked for the script and he read the script in his own time and uh, when he called me to give uh, feedback for the script is when he had the songs ready and he just uh, narrated the um, uh, the situation and he told me you know i feel this is the song for the situation and he he had just written it which was great so i guess it was the first time i mean it not that i have made many films uh, i just completed my third so but it was still the first and only time uh, that i i went through such a process that uh, the lyricist was calling me to give a feedback about the film and he actually called back with the songs and um, that was like i i don't think we changed even one word of both the songs he had written both so and that was the fastest i've seen anyone both which was great and um, i've worked with gandhar uh, uh, sangoram who is the music director i've worked with him since my first play in 2005 as a director and um, so this was our second film together uh, though this released first and i've always felt he 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 listens to so many 
so many composers and uh, still at the same time he has his original thought and i think what he brought to the table was wonderful uh, i think the first song uh, we had two iterations of it i think the second one is the final one but the first one was is also wonderful though i felt it was a little modern that was why i rejected it i thought uh, she uh, his wife rajni is singing it in 1988 and recording it in 1988 so i thought that it didn't have that uh, period feel to that song which is why we rejected that tune but otherwise even the first tune was great awesome that's a very nice story behind it thank you uh now nipun i wanted to talk to you about uh, some of the marathi content that's been made and i understand yeah. that you come from theater background so um, i'm guessing you're the right person to ask all of these questions mm-hmm. and um, <clears throat> my first question was going to be you know off late um, there has been um if i may a renewed kind of a wave of tapping into marathi literature for content mm-hmm. you know whether it is uh, kranti kanade who made a excellent short film uh, based on j a kulkarni's uh, chaitra and uh, rahi anil barve made a fantastic film with darab's uh, tumbad uh, which right. is based on rather darab's works and right. then recently there was another film which i haven't seen yet but i've seen the trailer for uh, is uh, yogesh deshpande's uh, 66 so that shift and okay. i thought that had shades of uh, vapukar is um, jp you know yeah. uh, so <clears throat> i i love all these uh, <clears throat> stories which are based on marathi literature and yeah. i wanted to ask you what what do you feel are the possibilities and the responsibilities which come uh, with tapping into the vast uh, treasure of marathi literature well um i i haven't used marathi literature for films but um, my i mean the first play that i directed for college uh, it was based on a story by venkatesh madgurkar named cycle and the play was also uh, called cycle and that that particular year i remember there were many many other colleges who had come out with um uh, plays based on short stories by eminent theater personalities and eminent uh, personalities in marathi literature Well, the responsibilities, if you ask me, um, well, I think you have to be responsible with the source, uh, uh, the source of the content. That's for sure. And uh, but at the same time, you should not be afraid to mold it to um, to your liking as a director, to your vision. And at the same time, if you want to modernize it, if you uh, you know, if you want to play with it. i think you should go ahead and do that is what i really really feel because um being too true to the source material can can probably get jarring i mean you have to add value to that uh, whether it's visual value uh, whether you you bring in um new characters you probably tweak a situation you change it i don't know what but um i have seen seen uh, plays or films made from source content which stay very true to whatever was written and um, um and content which the director adds something to it or the writer and the creative team comes together and they they make something of their own and i've always right. liked the latter better so yeah i mean um, in plays also uh, a few years back we started directing these um, Musical Sangeet Nataks uh, like Samusha Kallor or Manapman or Sobhadra. Now the thing is that uh, they are nearly a century or more than or more uh, older than that actually. Sobhadra is written in 1862. So um, obviously it's going to be different when they wrote it. They 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 had some other things in mind. Um, Anna Sahib Killoskar uh, or Kaka Sahib Khadilkar or uh, Govind Balla. They well they had something. something else going on at that point uh, in the society as well the socio political scenario was different uh, why they wrote those plays why they wrote uh, why these people wrote stories at that time uh, that was completely different so you have to understand that and you have to adapt i think that was the word through all the rambling that i was going through i think adapt is the word you need to adapt yourself and you need to adapt that story to your vision 
Right, I agree. Uh, like you said, I mean, you need to adapt. And um, like you said before that, I think it's important to carry your own voice uh, through that kind of adaptation, right? Because uh, what's the fun if you're just going to retell the same um, telling of the story? Right. And so uh, the context changes, uh, sure, politically, societally, and also the context within the framework that you're trying to tell the story. And, you know, I just keep on thinking about this because we'll get to this later on when I ask you some other questions. But there's just so many possibilities, uh, you know, especially now with uh, the streaming options and everything about, you know, tapping into this vast um, trove, like I said, of Marathi literature, like the G.A. Kulkarni and Ratnakar Matkari. And I don't think these stories have been told uh, that uh, often uh, off late. You know, I mean, obviously, before that, you know, there were adaptations and everything. We mm-hmm. when we were kids, um, you know, when I was a kid, you know, uh, there used to be TV shows, you know, or um, short story mm-hmm. adaptations. Mm-hmm. But I haven't seen anything of that sort uh, of late, you know, recently. Mm-hmm. And I'm always thinking about this. Uh, I think things will change with the streaming services now because the audience you're top- tapping into is different. With television, I think um, things, I wouldn't say it took a back seat, but I think they took a different turn uh, past 10 or 15 years, probably. Uh, whatever we say, whatever we uh, think, we have to come down and understand the fact that it all comes down to economics. It is it is simple demand and supply. So the television, I mean, the guys um, in television will definitely provide whatever is in demand. And uh, this I can say comfortably because if if we look at all all the content that has been put out by Marathi channels in the past 10 or 15 years, I wouldn't say there have been no attempts to do something different. There have been attempts and uh, they have been pretty good. They have broken uh, some rules of daily soaps or whatever content uh, uh, is being put out regularly. But if you look at the numbers, they're abysmal. They're not bad, they're abysmal. And of course, that's going to discourage any TV channel from not putting out content because if nobody is going to watch it or if a, if a very, uh, I mean, a small number of people is going to watch it, they won't do that. And I think... Um, with video on demand, with all the streaming services that are coming in, everybody has found an audience, and um, you can you can make content in any language. And I think language also no bar. I enjoy watching Narcos. I it's it's in Spanish, but I love watching it. And um, there are hundreds and thousands of people like me out there, and I'm sure that um, world class. Uh, Marathi content is just a few years away because uh, I'm I'm pretty sure that our literature, our writers are amazing. Whatever we have, we are sitting on a pool of great content and I'm sure we, we will be able to use it in the coming few years. And that's an interesting segue uh, for my next question to you. And um, I wanted to segue to the next question using the example of Tumbad, right? Okay. And I, I, I think uh, you probably know this better than I, but uh, I know that Rahi Barve was trying to make Tumbad in Marathi, but he just couldn't get it made. And I wish that movie was made in Marathi simply because the milieu of the film is, okay. you know, Maharashtri and for no other reason. And But for some reason or um, other, he wasn't able to make it. Yeah. And which uh, brings me to the next topic, which I wanted to uh, discuss with you was, um, you know, pushing the boundaries of uh, Marathi cinema in terms of genres and in terms of the content. Like, why do you think we still don't see the boundaries being pushed in terms of subjects and topics uh, to the extent to which regional cinema, say, for example, in the South does? you know, like genre bending, genre smashing cinema. If I were to just cite a couple of examples uh, from um, recent past, uh, the wonderful Tamil film Super Deluxe, or uh, the Telugu thriller Awe. Uh, what, what's stopping Marathi cinema from taking on those kind of genres and really pushing the boundaries? It all comes down to economics for once. Uh, but of, of course, let's let's keep that aside. Let's, let's keep demand and supply uh, aside for a bit. And um, even though we can't, because the budgets are decided accordingly, but we have to understand that uh, Marathi audience is still not coming out and watching films in the theaters. There is one exception like Sairat and um, 
but it's just one exception i mean um, it, it's we still we still talk about serat like it was yesterday but we have to understand it it was nearly 3 or 4 years it is now i think 4 years 4 years back right right so, so the footfalls it, are not there you think no not at all not at all and uh, the number of we don't have the number of screens we don't have we are in direct competition with uh hindi film industry because uh, both the industries marathi and hindi they are mainly based out of mumbai so um, there is there is some competition over there as well and we can't compete with their budgets whereas uh, south the films made in the south they have bigger budgets. they uh, some of them have bigger budgets than even hindi films and um, uh, they have a, a market in place there is a film going culture in the south i mean there are there are shows at 6 am in the morning and people actually go and watch those shows um so yeah that is one thing secondly i think that people are trying trying with different subject with whatever uh, whatever little they can with the budgets that they are getting and um best part about marathi film industry right now is that there is no star we are not a star driven industry it's not as if if one person acts in a film it's going to be a sure shot hit everybody has to reinvent himself all over again and that means we are a content driven industry so we have to work with different uh, uh, subjects we have to uh, work with different scripts time uh, over and over a period of time and i think that is what is happening if if you look at say the last 5 years and if you uh, pull out the highest grossing films of the past 5 years they'll all be different and if at the same time you pull out like the list of all the films that have been made in the past 5 years which is quite a lot by the way we shouldn't be making so many films for uh, such a small audience um, or we should increase our audience whatever it is either or i don't know what of course i would like to increase our audience and wa- have more and more people watch it but uh, we have like four four or five odd films releasing every friday which is which is not good economics at all when you don't have that much audience i see so you're saying it's uh, in your opinion it's uh, number one we don't have the footfalls for um you know producing this kind of content on the big screen and in number two you're saying that the niche kind of audience is too small or too fragmented for this kind of content to be made i mean um uh, most of my i mean not most of my i made just two films till now but uh, both my films have been watched more on an online platform and i when it was released uh, the number of messages i got and uh, the kind of messages i get even now after two three years of release is is something else i mean almost i i get one message for my film almost uh, once in two days or uh, you know every day probably and um, i think people people don't have this um, there is there is no film film watching culture in marathi let's let's just face it yeah hmm interesting yeah yeah i uh, recently spoke with uh, abhijit deshpande um, uh, you know a few weeks ago and mm-hmm. i kind of posed a similar question to him and mm-hmm. his uh, take was a little bit different and he was saying that we simply don't make uh, good content i mean he was saying that if uh, there is good content then people will come to the theaters and if there See, is something I, different i kind of uh, i would like to defer on that because um now for example if if we look at the films that have worked in uh, the hindi films that have worked <clears throat> i don't know if you can call it good content i mean most of them but still they work and uh, that is because they are a star driven industry and and they are catering to a different kind of an audience here uh, our audience is too fragmented and um, there is a major urban audience and which the rural audience just doesn't seem to um relate to it relate to that kind of content they they just don't relate to that kind of content whereas films like sairat or baban are those uh, which which find middle ground uh, brilliantly i mean uh, they work for the 
urban as well as rural audience. I think Sairat is uh, just a, a pretty much an outlier, right? Because yeah, Sairat think... has actually connected across borders, I mean, internationally That's as well. True. And um, it's uh, it's something that kind of, uh, you know, connects across um, a lot of different milieus and settings and um, languages. So it's yeah. a fairly universal um, <clears throat> um, Emotion. subject. Yeah. yeah, emotional kind of a core and that kind of um, uh, appeal to it. But like yeah. you said, yeah, I mean, we do have this tendency about falling back on Sairat, which has been now almost five years ago so yeah. or more, right? So we haven't had that kind of a picture since then. No, we haven't. And we need one. Right, right, right. What, uh, what in your opinion, uh, or what, what have you seen uh, off late, and when I say off late in the last couple of years, is uh, kind of the edgiest Marathi content that you have seen. Now, it might not be, you know, something that was very successful. It might not be even accessible to people. It might be on a small stage or something. But what, what, what are some of the examples of some of the content which really tried to push the boundaries in Marathi, that is? I think... Fandry was great, but again, I'm going back to Nagra. But I think Fandry was one film that actually um, it did it did try to do something a lot different. Yes, uh, Fandry was excellent, no doubt. Yeah. But that and was even before Sarah, right? That was even before Sarah, that's true. Uh, after that, I think, uh, see, good cinema was made and not... Um, but since you asked me about edgy content, so I'm just thinking about I'm thinking in that way. Uh, I think Katsalim to that way, they, it tried doing something different um, uh, with the with the subject as well as the presentation. Uh, I think that was one film. Apart from that, um, Ringan was pretty good. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I uh, I haven't seen Katcha Limbu, but that's the one by uh, Prasad Oak, right? Prasad Oak. Yeah, yes. So I haven't seen that. I, I know of that film. I haven't seen it. I felt, um, in a way, faster Fene also, uh, the kind, the, the way it was edited and the film score and the way it was written and shot. I think it, it, did, um, it did feel like a big film. It did feel like a bigger film. And uh, it was entertaining throughout. One of the uh, films that I'm really looking forward to now is uh, Tanaji with uh, Ajay Devgan and um, Sahib. Uh, that is again a Hindi film. Oh, is it? Okay, I yeah. thought it was supposed to be a bilingual. Uh, I think it is primarily a Hindi film. I see. If I'm okay. Wrong. okay, okay. Yeah, because that was... Uh, <clears throat> Something I was looking forward to, you know, because it, it brings kind of the big uh, kind of a blockbuster kind of a treatment to, uh, you know, a story that pretty much everybody who has grown up in Maharashtra has, uh, you know, uh, grown up with. So I was kind of interested about that. You know, I keep on hearing this, uh, that uh, Rohit Shetty's dream kind of a project is retelling of Shivaji. And you know, I keep on wondering <laughs> what kind of treatment that would be. And I would be seriously interested in it because right. I love his films. And, you know, he it's a different school of filmmaking, obviously. But, you know, I would love to see Shivaji's story being retold, uh, Rohit Shetty style. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, and Nipun, I got to ask you about uh, Casting Couch. Um, you know, Casting yeah. Couch was something that... Uh, I guess you guys kind of broke new ground for uh, Marathi comedy, at least. And um, it's, uh, you know, it's it's kind of in the tradition of uh, Between the Two Ferns and Eric Andre show. Uh, was that inspiration or this is just something that you guys kind of concocted? Um, um, well, I think uh, Between Two Ferns was definitely an inspiration. We can't deny that. Uh, but also, I mean, all credit to Saran Sathe for uh, coming up with this show. Uh, he had pitched it to us three years, uh, two years before it actually took off. And um, Saran Sathe, Amir Vag and I go long, way back, way back. He was actually our first director in college when we were in 11th and Saran was uh, in the last year of, last year or first year of uh, post-graduation. And... Um, I mean, that was when he saw Amir and me, and we were both very uh, carefree at that time. And we had absolutely no responsibilities, and the kind of uh, things we pulled, and the pranks we the pranks we pulled, actually, 
on everyone. I think that that was what inspired Saran a few <laughs> years to to come up with something like Casting Couch. And Amir and I were always a team from the beginning. And um, uh, once he, uh, when he had pitched it to us, actually at that time Amir was not the star that he is today. Uh, he had not done his um, television show, which made him uh, a, a household name. So it was even more fun once we started doing it because Amir was uh, was pretty famous, and yet he was playing a struggler. Um, uh, but yeah, I think it was it was all it was all Saram. He he comes up with these um, uh, brilliant uh, skeletons of the show uh, structures, and Amir and I just go ahead and fill it. And he gives us all the freedom, uh, you know. And we we try to uh, we try to make it as much fun as possible by keeping it natural. And how open were celebrities for this sort of format? Like, were they reluctant at first when you approached? Uh, like, what was your uh, pitch to the guests? Oh no, they were very, very open about it. Of course, there were a, there was an exception or two, but let's not get into that. But um, all of them, almost all of them, were very, very open about the format. Uh, usually, it's a three to four hour shoot. So before we actually start shooting, um, we are spending some time with them. and we know most of them beforehand so we have worked with them before so we kind of have a rapport with them and um, and we go through the questions once and we tell them and of course we don't know their answers what they are going to answer over there because a lot of uh, our next questions or our reactions depend on their answers so we we actually tell them not to tell us uh these answers so that we can react naturally and you know try and try our, uh, and let our instinct guide us on in front of camera so um uh, so they know almost all the questions and they know it's going to be like pulling um there's going to be like pulling and um uh, if 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 they feel that the, they have spoken something or we have spoken something about about someone or an incident that they don't want to um you know get it out there in public they the request saran and of course we listen to it so yeah <laughs> right one thing i wanted to ask you was um <clears throat> what what kind of cinema do you see yourself doing in 3 to 5 years from now in the sense that uh, what kind of story would you like to tell what kind of conversations would you like to bring to the fore with uh, your cinema well to be very honest that's a pretty difficult question right now one that i'm grappling with myself because uh, uh, the film that i've just completed marks the end of all the bound scripts that i had written and now i need to write something to uh, <laughs> so to go back to the drawing board okay yeah so i really really need to go back and uh, you know check out all my notes that i've written throughout the these years to come up with some sort of an inspiration a line here or whatever it is i don't know but i need need to write something now desperately so that is one thing uh, but uh, for sure one thing is um, whatever i do i i want um, to be convinced about it 100% there is no other way i can i can work and uh, and when it comes to that the genres don't mind i i would really like to work in all kinds of genres and when it i mean you know just take a look at somebody like steven spielberg I, you, his body of work is i don't know how how a person can do all of that and he's still working and he's still making films that appeal to the youth and it's it's just brilliant and uh, you know when you have someone like that in front of you you just you just forget everything else and you start working and that's just one name there are so many other names um so yeah i really don't know the genre in which i will be working on my next film or in the next 3 to 5 years i don't know what i'll be doing i just know that uh, there'll be one film that will be releasing in 2020 uh it is uh, it is the film that i've been trying to make for the past 5 years and i really do hope it it uh, i mean people love it and um, i really do hope i'm proud of that film Is there anything you can share about that film at this point? It's a biopic on. Uh, uh, it's a biopic. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. And <laughs> oh boy, you you almost had us. <laughs> yeah. 
but i'm sure if you uh, okay i'm giving you a clue here but i'm sure if you dig a little deeper you find out because it's it's mostly out there and oh, okay. um, yeah it it will show 60 years of that person's life and he's a cult he's an icon and um, there are so many um, personalities in this film and i hope i'm able to tell a good story and not just episodes of a person's life i hope that film actually gives some kind of a meaning to the life that he has lived and to uh, the person who's watching it and it probably inspires that person to do something or at least makes him feel and makes that person be in that moment with that character oh that's awesome i i'm i'm going to try to do my homework and find out what this who this <laughs> is <laughs> super Great, great. And uh, can you tell us one thing which you think about a lot as a creative artist, uh, but rarely get an opportunity to talk about publicly? Oh, okay. I think uh, it will definitely have to be uh, the politics that is being uh, played in um, not just our country, but yeah, our country because I I am here. uh but yeah mostly the politics that is taking place and whether it is politics based on religion or caste or class and um it is something that you definitely or everybody has an opinion about but i don't know if it's a learned opinion and it's uh, these days with social media it's just so difficult to express an opinion about actually about anything but at the same time mostly about politics because you know you just you just trolled uh, you're mindlessly trolled, yeah mindlessly and you're uh, you 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 have to be thick skin to not take it personally and not let it affect you there are many many people out there who don't give a damn about these trolls and they just continue doing what they and i don't know if i want to be that kind of a person um though i would like to be sometimes i do wish i was that kind of a person but i don't know if i can be it it just it it uh, it does affect uh, me for at least a few moments and i think it's just human to be affected uh, but yeah i think um, it will be it will be about politics that i really can't um, i don't see myself talking about it publicly though i would like to interesting yeah yeah i i think i i i'm in a similar boat uh, you know uh, but um, uh, instead of politics i what i really think about a lot is about how the discourse around politics and everything on social media has been kind of hijacked by extremes on both end right the left yeah. and the right and yeah. the center and the most uh, sensible voice you know left of center or right of center they have practically been silenced Yeah and what i worry is that because of this hijacking you know so to speak of the discourse uh, right. a lot of the young people on the social media i mean they are getting you know all this uh, misinformation sometimes disinformation yeah. and you know that's shaping their opinions uh, for the years to come yeah and that, that's something that is very uh, troublesome you know and that's yeah. something very disquieting Hey uh, Nipun a couple of recommendations uh one uh, I'm going to ask you for a favorite um black and white marathi film and one book recommendation in fiction um black and white marathi film will be samna yes fantastic so yeah that and a uh, book i mean there are so many but um you know the ones by prakash narayan sant pankha sharda sangeet i would love to talk about j a kulkarni and jaivan darvi and uh, so many others pushirege and uh, even sometimes narayan dharap but i i i'll have to go with i mean this is um, this is some world class stuff that prakash narayan sant has written and i i think i think it needs a visual voice hmm I don't think I I don't believe I've um, read this I'll, I'll definitely try to seek it out. You said Pankha right? Pankha Sharda Sangeet Jhumbar and but um, I forget who Manwas starts with Vanwas. So it, okay. it it starts with Vanwas then it's Sharda Sangeet then it's Pankha and then it's Jhumbar four books. Great. And these are uh, the um, editions are fairly accessible? Yeah yeah yeah. 
Well, uh, Nipun, thanks a lot. Uh, that was a lot of fun uh, chatting with you. Thank you, Manju. That was my chat with Nipun Darpatikari. It was great to hear Nipun's opinions, and I'm also glad I got a chance to speak with him and ask him about Bab Janma, a film which I quite liked. Do drop us a comment. We would love to hear what you thought about the episode and anything else you would like to add to the conversation held on the episode. You can follow me on Twitter at Love of Cinema SFA for podcast related updates and my tweets on all things movies. See you next week. This is Amanchu signing off and like always, thank you for listening to the Love of Cinema podcast. <laughs>